Hello, welcome to episode 144 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk and today is the 3rd of December. So welcome everybody, I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today I have some knitting, some cross stitch and I have some information on my shop update. This week we're a little bit shorter because I wanted to make the podcast a little bit shorter because I'm doing vlogmas. So every day in December, well the 1st to the 25th of December, I'm doing a little video every day to show all the crafty things that I've been up to and some festive things in there that aren't perhaps so crafty related. So advent calendars and things and mainly crafty goodness because I, um, I don't tend to do much else but craft anyway. <laughs> So pop over and watch those if you're interested in Vlogmas. You can find me on Instagram, Ravelry and Facebook as Craft House Magic and I have my own website crafthousemagic.co.uk where you can find my handmade project bags, hand dyed yarns, stitch markers, higher higher knitting needles, clover crochet hooks and bag making supplies such as fabrics, wadding, zips etc. So we have quite a few make-alongs going on at the Ravelry group and on Instagram at the moment so you can use the hashtags for these or go to the Ravelry group and chat. So first of all we've got the Craft House Magic Gift Along 2020 and that's going right till the end of the year and it's basically all things gifting so I'll pop the hashtags on the screen for each of the make-alongs as I'm talking about them and that's the hashtags you use on Instagram but there is a thread on Ravelry for each of these as well. So we have the Festive Frenzy 2020, which is basically all the festive themed projects. It can be any craft, any of these. So do come and join in. I have opened the Ravelry group on Ravelry now. And of course, I've, some people have already started using the hashtag Festive Frenzy 2020 as well. So we also have the Mistletoe Kisses Make Along. So whether you've purchased one of my kits, whether it's the Advent or the sock set or one of the patterns, you can join in with the Mistletoe Kisses make along and I, you can actually be crocheting or doing something else with your yarn if you don't want to use one of those patterns if it's related to something I've designed to do with the mistletoe kisses sets um, or the yarn you can come and join in so I also wanted to mention a lovely make along that my lovely friends Dawn and Jeanette are running so they're doing the Xmas Baubles 2020 make along I will get you to go over to their Instagram pages or their YouTube channels to find out a little bit more but it's all to do with Christmas baubles so the lovely ladies that are running it are Dawn from Dawn's Days and Jeanette from Crafty Clegg Creations so I will leave links to both their YouTube channels and their Instagram pages in the description bar down below and also in the show notes so let's get on with the knitting shall we I have a finished object finally <laughs> I have been working on this such a long time this is my slip stravaganza and it's really good because it's good for podcasting because I can see through the hole <laughs> whether I'm in shot or not which is brilliant <laughs> so it's absolutely massive isn't it I love it though. If you've been watching my vlogmas you'll have seen me blocking this and I am so pleased that I have because it just looks so much better now it's blocked. Absolutely gorgeous. There's one thing that I do wish I had changed slightly. So these triangles here I think that they'd have looked better if they were in the purple or one of the purples but obviously I didn't know what how it was going to turn out when I was knitting along with it but I'm still really pleased with it and I love the fact that the grey sort of frames everything love it so I think because this is so wide and big I'm gonna have to just wear it as like a cape because it would just ruin it if I sort of wore it like a scarf like I normally do with my shawls so oh look at that Ta-da! <laughs> I shall turn round and hopefully you'll be able to see it um, from behind but it does seem like it's going to really stay on as well which is lovely it's got lots of sort of length coming over the front of the shoulders that will keep it on but of course I could wear it with a shawl pin as well so I'll probably have it like this on the colder days and have a shawl pin sort of there to keep it up I could actually have two shawl pins one sort of on this side to keep that side up and then one this side as well so that's I'm 
hands on hips pose here. <laughs> I'm so pleased with it. I absolutely love it. And I'm so pleased that I sewed all those ends in before I got right to the end. <laughs> Because that would have been a, a bit depressing having to sew all those ends in. So that's what the back looks like. So it isn't quite as pretty on the back of the work. But the front is so stunning. I just love it. Really pleased. So again, the pattern is the Slip Stravaganza by Stephen West. It was a mystery knit along. And the clues came out once a week for the month of October, I think. So it's taken me two months to complete it. But it is pretty big. So I've done that. Oh, I wanted to talk to you about the yarns as well. So the grey that I use to go in between everything is one of my hand dyed ones and it's living on a prayer colourway. And I used a merino cashmere nylon base because it went with the other yarns really well. I used the greeny, it's like with a bit of blue, turquoisey blue in it, is the Lolo Did It yarn. Um, the darker purple is a blue skin yarns and the paler sort of purple well there's little bits of purple and green in there as well that one's a fondant fiber i will leave links in the description bar to the company so you can go and have a look if you want to i have had those yarns quite a long time though so i don't know if you'll be able to get hold of them now so that's one finished object i have something else to show you now it's not quite finished because it needs tassels because everything needs tassels doesn't it <laughs> but my lovely mother-in-law liz has knitted this cowl for me now it looks really long here but i think once it's actually on and there's tassels on the bottom it's going to look amazing i've probably just blocked it a bit straight to be honest but i have tried it on and i think that it's going to look amazing so i'll put it on now without the tassels and then hopefully by next week i'll have added those tassels in i only blocked it yesterday so there's little points that you're supposed to add the tassels to around the edges and I just love it. So that length, it just um, sort of flops down nicely. That's a nice word, isn't it? Flop. <laughs> no, it um, slouches nicely so it keeps you nice and warm around the neck. Actually, having it not too wide is probably a little bit warmer than having it too large. So once those tassels on as well, I think that'll finish it off really nicely. I'm so pleased. So Liz has knitted that for me and she knitted it in one of my yarns um, as a sort of sample. I keep getting my clips caught in knitwear. It's not good, is it? <laughs> So the yarn that I used is an alpaca cashmere and silk base that I sell in my shop and it is super, super soft. It is a four ply weight or fingering weight yarn and I just love it right against my skin. I'm not, well, I suppose I am quite sensitive. I can wear more things around my neck, but if for a hat or anything, I cannot wear anything that's too rough. And this is mega, mega soft. I don't know why I have to illustrate it by touching it onto my forehead. <laughs> But there we go. So doesn't it look weird all pulled out long when when it's on? Fabulous. It's slightly longer, well, quite a lot longer at the front than the back. But I'm going to put those tassels all the way along and I shall show you it again next week with the tassels on so you can have the full effect. So the cowl pattern that I got Liz to knit was the Midsummer Haze Cowl by Hohi Locatelli. And her patterns are always lovely, aren't they? And I have been meaning to cast this on myself for ages and Liz was asking me for a project to do. So I thought, well, I'll give her this project to do because I'd already got the yarn caked up and she has made a fabulous job. Thank you so much, Liz. So I have two more knitting projects to show you, although they're not finished, they are works in progress. So first of all, I have a half finished object and it is a sock. So these socks are knitted from the lovely yarn that Brigitte sent me all the way from Austria. And it is a beautiful regia yarn that has got some silk in it. And it's really nice, plump texture um, and it's just gorgeous to knit with. So I shall definitely be looking forward to wearing these when they're finished. So I basically used a simple top down sock pattern. I have a pattern for free on Ravelry on my website. I will leave links in the description bar down below. And I also actually, I have a YouTube set of tutorials to tell you how I knit my socks top down using the magic loop method. And I will leave links to that in the description bar down below. And I will leave a thing at the top there, a link at the top. So it's basically using my simple top down pattern 
and the heel flap is a slip stitch heel just to give it a little bit, bit more extra strength and this yarn is just so pretty look at that these haven't been properly blocked yet I've just popped them on the sock blocker to show you so that's the first one finished and I haven't actually cast the second one yet um, and that's how the balls looking at the moment I, I think it was a hundred grams so there should be quite a bit left over when I finished we shall see so my last knitting project that I've got to show you is that I put a spell on you socks. So this is a colourway that I designed sort of for the Halloween or autumn time. And it's a nice subtle mixture of browns, mustards, purples, and sort of black and grey. So here it is in the sock that I'm knitting. And I'm doing again the simple top down sock, but I did do a couple of rows of the contrast purple just here. And then I'm doing purple heels. Uh, and toes as well and I've done the heel flap and gusset and I've just started doing the decreases and I am actually really really loving these needles so these are the flyer trio needles that higher higher do and I started putting them in my shop after I tried these out for the first time and but the more I knit with them the sort of more consistent my knitting is because obviously it takes a bit of getting used to new types of needles and I actually am really loving them to the point where I think that I might prefer them to DPNs. I don't know. <laughs> so the ones I'm actually knitting on are some interchangeable versions that I picked up because I didn't realise they did the fixed ones. But I think that they're really expensive when you have to buy the cables separate from the tips. So I decided to stock the ones that are fixed in my shop. So they've got a, a different colour cable. There's a blue cable rather than a pink one. And the cable is very slightly thinner, I think, on the ones I've got. But I don't think that's going to make a lot of difference. Because the higher, higher cables are quite supple anyway. And I will be... I'm definitely going to keep a set of the fixed ones for myself. I really like them. And I'm I'm tempted to have a couple of other sizes out of my stock as well. <laughs> so that's what how I've got on with those socks. I'm having a bit of a sock kick at the moment, aren't I? I really need to get those tubes that I, my mum had knitted for me cut into socks so that I can then have those for Christmas because there was a couple of Christmas colourways that I need to actually use as gifts. So... I think that's all the knitting to show you today but I do have some cross stitch to show you and here it is Ta -da! it is a bit creasy now I've been using it so much <laughs> hopefully you can see that so I've worked the alphabet across the top of the work and I've also done some of the border there's two lines of border just inside the alphabet and then I've started on the outer border as well. So there's two lines on the outside and two lines on the inside and I've just done a little bit of that. So I actually normally do 20 minutes every day but for two days I didn't do any this week just because I was so busy and starting with vlogmas videos as well. So I could have got a little bit more done but hey ho <laughs> but i am really enjoying it so that was a pattern by uh, moira blackburn and i leave a link in the description bar to where you can get the pattern yourself if you're interested and i'm using an 18 count ada and it it came with the kit so i don't know what the ada is exactly it's just that it came with the kit so that's my cross stitch section and i just have one more section left to talk about the shop update so after last week it was so busy with lots of people purchasing these little dump cases I have bought a shed load more and they are going to go in the shop on Friday I'm going to have to keep them stocked because people just love these they are ideal to pop in as a little extra for your Christmas gift as well so this is just one of the colorways that um, higher higher sell um, which I just picked out of the bag but I've literally bought absolute shed loads so it shouldn't go out of stock this week hopefully so those are going in the shop this friday at 7 p.m at the shop update time i also wanted to say that now as of the 1st of december the mistletoe kisses sock yarn is now in the shop i did originally release it as a kit with the sock pattern and a bag as well but i am now releasing just the sock yarn on its own you can obviously get hold of the sock pattern again but the bags were completely exclusive to the people who bought the kits 
I have a number of bases that you can choose. This one I've knitted is in my Selena sock set, but there are some Merino sock sets and BFL sock sets as well. Those are the ones that I'd um, advise for socks, but you can choose this colourway in all the other yarn bases that I've got in my shop as well. Anyway, enough shop waffle. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I shall see you in the next episode. And watch out for the Vlogmas videos between now and next week's podcast. Thanks for watching. Bye!